These are the Aura from Canto Audio. They're brand new desktop class speakers that have a really, really big sound. Now, this is the primary speaker and this is the secondary speaker. The main difference between these two speakers is the primary speaker has this multifunction button down here along with all the connections, but otherwise they are pretty much the same in that they both have Class D amplifiers built into the cabinet and those amplifiers output about 50 watts of continuous power and it is bi-amped. So this three quarter inch tweeter right here gets about nine watts of power for each one of the speakers and the three inch woofer down here gets another 16 watts of power and there is DSP built into the cabinet or digital signal processing controlling the crossover in these speakers now on this primary speaker if you push and hold this button right here it will automatically turn the speaker on but you can also press it and if you can see that little LED down there you can press it and you will go through the different inputs that are on the back of the speaker this also serves as the volume knob because you can twist it up and down so you can turn the volume up now on the rear of the speaker are all of the connections for the speakers, including the slotted port up top right here, so it has better bass performance. And then below that is a quarter 20 hole, so you can mount these to a wall or to a speaker stands. And here on the primary speaker are all the other connections, including this USB-C connection, so you can connect to your computer, a Bluetooth pairing button right here. And then below that is a subwoofer out connection. So when you plug in a subwoofer cable here, the speakers automatically send every frequency below 100 hertz to that subwoofer you don't have to do anything that's really nice and then right here are two rca connections left and right so that you can connect an analog source like a turntable and then below that is the speaker wire that runs between the primary speaker and the secondary speaker connection right here it's a little over 80 inches long and on my desk that's about 55 inches wide i didn't have any issues connecting these two speakers so i think that's going to work for most uh desk out there and then right here is the main power connection. So you can plug in the power adapter to the primary speaker. Another thing that comes in the Aura box is feet for the speakers. They give us a total of eight, so you get four per speaker, and that allows you to protect the surface finish of the speaker and the table, and it's going to reduce the amount of sliding and vibrations traveling through the speaker to the table. But you can also buy speaker stands like the Elevated SE2 that I have right here. This is a nice speaker stand. It's got a nice rubber grip on the bottom so it doesn't slide very easily across the table. There's also some rubber right here to protect the surface finish of the speaker. And they have a lip back here with rubber. So when you place your speaker on it, it just goes back so far and it's not gonna move. But they also have the S2, which is an angled speaker stand like you see here. And again, it has a lot of the same features with the padding and the lip on the back. And they also sell just standard speaker stands that will work with the OR. Now all the stands are sold separately. Like two magnets, we are drawn to each other. Like two magnets, we are drawn to each other. You just know how to push all my buttons. You just know how to push all my buttons.
So what did you think of those audio samples? Uh, it was basically a comparison between the Aura and the Fluence AS61s. So let me tell you what I thought. I was impressed, okay? Um, as you can see here, the Aura is much smaller than these Fluence speakers. I mean, much smaller. But in room sound, these speakers were much closer than they should be, okay? Much, much closer. And I was pleasantly surprised. Now, the reason why I decided to compare these two speakers is because on the website, Kanto actually says that the Auras can play just as well as a five inch studio monitor, which is much bigger than this. Now, I don't have a five inch studio monitor here, but I do have this. This is the uh, Fluence AI-61s. It's a powered bookshelf speaker with a lot of the same features as the Aura. Both of them have silk dome tweeters. I believe this is one inch and the Aura's is three quarter of an inch. They both have bass drivers down here. This is six and a half inch. This is like three inch, okay? They're both ported on the back and they both have Bluetooth 5, USB input, RCA input, and sub out connections. There's also an optical on the Fluence AI-61, but that's basically it. They are comparable in that regard. Now. The Aura is like 350 as I'm recording this, and the Fluence is like 300 as I'm recording this. So price-wise, they're in the same basic category. But like I said, what I'm impressed by is the fact that the Aura can even hold its own against such a larger speaker with a larger driver and a larger cabinet, okay? Um, I really, really wasn't expecting that. I crank the Auras up just to hear how they sound in a room. I was like, am I going to hear distortion once I crank these up? And I can say I did not hear distortion, which is impressive, okay? In a room, cranked up, didn't hear any distortion. And compared to the Fluence, again, they held their own. Now, if you've got a party that you're planning and there's gonna be like 100 people and you're planning to use these for that party, probably not gonna be enough, okay, for 100 people in a room. But if you've got like 20 or 30 people, it may work out, right? Uh, because these actually work really, really well. They compare very, very well. I listened to these compared to my 16-inch um, M1 MacBook Pro because I know a lot of people are moving from a laptop to a pair of desktop speakers. Now, the M1 MacBook Pro's uh, speakers are considered to be some of the best in the laptop industry, okay? And I have to say, the Aura easily sound better, okay? Because they've got better bass performance, um, a stronger mid-range. It's just a better speaker overall, better sounding speaker compared to a traditional laptop speaker. And that's honestly, that's not really a, a big revelation, right? I mean, you've got a full cabinet here. This is dedicated, right? Um, so that's that. But if you're coming from something like, let's say the YU2s, the YU4s from Kanto, and you're like, hey, is it worth the upgrade? I would say yes. And I say that because I got a chance to hear these compared to the YU2s and the YU4s and even the YU6s at Audio Advice Live back in August. Kanto was there, they played these, and I found that these auras sounded better than those speakers. Even the YU6s, I mean, the YU6s probably had a little bit better bass performance, but overall, these actually held their own. They were cleaner and more detailed than those speakers across the basic frequency range. So I was happy about that. Now, if you're thinking about, hey, I have a pair of tux, should I you know, upgrade from my tux to these because they're much smaller? I wouldn't. <laughs> I would not upgrade the Kanto Tux to these because the Kanto Tux are kind of a, they're in a different class as far as sound is concerned. There's more depth to the image. There's more clarity at the high end. Um, just an overall better speaker. But for their size, these hold their own. And that's what I was really impressed by. Now, are they perfect? No, they're not perfect. Okay, um, again, this is a three inch driver and the frequency will go down to 60, 65 hertz when you're playing bass. So if you wanna go lower than that, you definitely need a subwoofer. Now, like I said, you got the subwoofer out there, it automatically crosses over at 100 hertz, so it'll take care of that for you, which is nice. But they will play down to about 60 hertz and that's honestly, in my mind, that's a lot for a lot of music and so it plays well, it's just not gonna go down to 20 hertz, okay? That's the first thing. 
Uh, mid-range wise, nice strong mid-range. I like the way the mid-range sounds. It's nice and smooth. Um, at the high end, the treble. I think the treble sounds good, but I wish it was just a little bit cleaner, a little bit more detailed. When listening to the song You Loved Me by Karen Clark Sirius, a song with her and her daughter singing. I like it because it's got two female vocals, but it's also got the band playing and it's a live band. And the drummer is playing at the beginning and he's kind of playing some hi-hat sounds. And I could hear those hi-hat sounds and they sounded good, but I just wish it was just a little bit cleaner coming out of here. And that's honestly one of the things I think you probably noticed in that audio sample when I compared the Aura to the AI-61. The top end, the treble just sounds just a little bit cleaner uh, from the AI-61s as compared to the Auras. But otherwise, I think the Auras sound really good. I am very, very impressed with what Kanto has done here, and I don't have any issues recommending them. If you are looking for a desktop speaker like these that you can sit like this, or you can sit like this, which is kind of how I like to have them on my desk so I can put them on other monitors, it works. These speakers sound really good and they sound better than what came before them from Kanto being the YU2s and the YU4s. So I, again, I don't have any issues recommending them. If you have any questions, please drop them in the comment section below. Also, I'll put links to these in the description below so you can pick them up. Thank you guys for watching. I'll talk to you next time.